Welcome everyone. A few weeks ago, I posted a little poll on my Instagram to let you all vote on the next character for my tarot card series. And I'm super excited to let you know that the winner, by just a few votes, was the star. To start off this project, I'm going to be hybriding two Monster High dolls to create the perfect base. I have this C.A. Cupid doll that's a little worse for wear. You can see all the yucky glue on her face, and you might notice at the very bottom of the neck peg it's quite worn and has the possibility to break off quite easily. So I decided to change the body for a spare Catherine de Mew one that I have left over from when I used her head to make my Sphinx doll for Halloween. I prepped the doll as usual by cutting off all her hair as short as possible and then removing the roots from inside. I then use 100% pure acetone to wipe away her factory makeup, as well as the paint on her scalp. I knew that I wanted her hairstyle to be pulled back off the face, and also to feature some kind of braiding, so I decided to reroute her hair to make the finish look nice and neat. I create a blended hair mix using white and grey to create an almost silvery tone and then proceed to reroute her off camera. I only reroute around her hairline, and I'll go back in after the face up to finish the rest of her head. I wrap her hair in a little fabric burrito to protect it, and then give her face two coats of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish to give it a paper-like surface that I can draw on. I start drawing in her eyes with a very light grey watercolour pencil. Given that her skin is white, it would be very easy to stain the vinyl. So with each element of the face that I'm adding, I make sure that the first pencil marks are with a very light colour to make it easy to correct if I decide to change anything or if I make a mistake. In the tarot, the star card can be read to mean hope and despair and can also represent protection and guidance. Whenever all hope seems lost, the star will reappear to prove that you have really lost nothing, except perhaps your sight of the path to enlightenment. For this doll's design, I wanted to combine these ideas with a strong fantasy aesthetic, starting with her skin tone. I wanted her to be super pale, with visible veins and burst blood vessels. I imagine that this woman is up in the sky shining brightly all night long, but when she stops glowing, she's left with this almost translucent skin. I then wanted to give a strong contrast between her skin and her wardrobe, so as you'll see later on in the video, all her clothes and accessories are jet black, as if she's dressed herself in the actual night sky. To reference the guiding and protective nature of the card, I will give her a small amount of armour, but no weapon. I want this to show that she is strong, but not destructive. There is a lot of meditative imagery on almost all renditions and designs of the star card, 
including the presence of water, shown either in a body of water like a lake or pond, or a vessel containing it. To replace the weapon, I will give my star a small vessel. The star card indicates that you have come through your tough times with a renewed sense of yourself and the world around you. You are full of calm, well-balanced energy and that you are open to healing the wounds of the past. It reminds you to trust that the universe has a plan for you. I really hope to capture this feeling in my doll's design and I would love to hear from you all in the comments if you think I achieved it. At this point of the face-up, I am using a greyish-purple chalk pastel on a tiny fluffy applicator to mark out where I want her eyebrows to be. I'm going to be giving her white eyebrows to match her hair, but I'll use this grey-purple colour as a base so the white hairs have something to contrast against. Before I move on to paint, I just give her a few more pink imperfections on her face. I imagine that there is so much starlight and heat emanating from her that she would have a few small burst blood vessels, and I wanted to show that these kinds of human imperfections can be beautiful too. Using a wet brush, I lift the pigment off a watercolour pencil to give a lovely deep and opaque effect to all the black elements of her face up, which are her eyelashes and eyeliner. I then just decide to add her glowy highlight now, using white pearly pigments and ultra-fine glitters. I then go back to my painting, but this time with white, adding her individual eyebrow hairs, as well as her catch lights, eyelashes, waterline, and a few other highlights on the high points of her face. To complete her serene and mystical appearance, I wanted to give her a silver marking on her forehead, so I first go in with a grey pencil and sketch out this stylized half star shape coming out of her hairline. Once I'm happy with the pencil work, I go in with this very pale silver watercolour paint and go over what I've drawn to make it super shiny and metallic. Off camera, I also blushed the chest and decolletage of the doll and sketched out a similar tattoo design. This also gets the silver paint to match.
To finish off her face, all that's left to do is gloss her eyes and lips. Now back to her hair, I know that the reroute I did just around her hairline won't have enough coverage for the style I have in mind, so I glue some more hair directly to her scalp with PVA glue, letting it dry overnight. Then with that done, I decide to give her a French fishtail braid, so I take a piece of hair from the middle front of her head and divide it into two. I then take a thin strand of hair from the left section, gathering it from the outside, and pass it over to the right hand side. I then repeat on the right, taking a small section from the outside and passing it over. To make this a French braid, I then gather the outside section and add in some more hair from the hairline before crossing it over. I then repeat this all the way down the head. Once I get to the bottom, I can revert back to the simple fishtail braid method. However, this time I weave in a piece of thin silver chain. I think this will add a magical, shiny quality to the style, and also tie into the strong but soft protector character that I'm creating. To make her dress, I cut a large circle skirt and a bodice piece. Circle skirts can be very difficult on doll scale because hemming a circle of this size can be almost impossible to get right and lovely and smooth. However, this black fabric I've chosen does not fray, so I'm free to leave the edge of the dress unhemmed. I sew up the sides of the bodice piece and try it on the doll, creating a plunging neckline which shows off her chest tattoo, but without being too revealing. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I can attach the bodice to the skirt piece, and I also add a piece of fabric wrapping around her waist for an added detail. To create this vessel, I take this miniature vase I have in my stash. I wanted to create the illusion that the jug contained a black hole, or some galaxy, or something magical like that. So I take some UV resin and dye it with black pigment until it's totally opaque. I then carefully pour it into the vessel until it's full, and then cure it under a nail lamp. I also use clear resin to create the illusion of water dripping out of one of the sides. I like the illusion that when it's out of the vessel it's water, but when it's inside the vessel it's magical black space stuff. For her armour, I modify and 3D print these shoulder pieces with long spikes. 
I love how visually striking the spikes are, and I think that they can also reference the points of a star. I know that in space stars don't have points, but the pointed star is such a well-known symbol, and I wanted to lean into that. I sand the pieces until they're nice and smooth, give them a coat of black paint, and then cover them in UV resin to make them super glossy. I also 3D print some shoes for her, which also get painted black and made super glossy. I felt like heels were the wrong choice for this doll, so I modified a file I had to create a ballet slipper style shoe. I love when you see this style of shoe on the doll, it almost looks like she's floating because her heels aren't on the ground, which is perfect because for this doll her home is floating up in the sky. For a final accessory, I wanted to give her some glossy black earrings. I hook these beads onto a silver jump ring, and then use UV resin to glue them onto the flat head of a silver pin, which I cut down to be the right size. The end of the pin can then be threaded into the doll's ear, to look like a hoop earring with the black jewel dangling off it. And with that, she's all done. I hope you enjoyed my interpretation of this card. I think I have two or three more tarot characters left to add to the series. Even though the tower card lost this vote, would you guys still be interested in seeing that character? Let me know who else you'd like to see. I might put up another poll for you to vote on, either here on YouTube or on my Instagram. Without further ado, I present the star. I hope you love her. so much for watching, your support means so much to me. Make sure you like the video if you like it, it really helps my channel, and leave a comment below, I read every single comment. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content, and I'll see you next time. Have an awesome day.